Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. We have our upcoming games for the following seven days. Well, it's actually going to take us up to Friday the 4th of October and there are a few nice ones coming up. Thanks so much to all of you who have joined our patronage, which is like almost 100 people now, which is incredible. And to the rest of you that support us each and every month. Please leave a comment down below and let me know if you're going to be picking up any of these games. First up then is a title that doesn't really need much introduction called Sniper Elite 3 The Ultimate Edition and that releases on Monday. Now I'll have a review of this one up for you so be sure to wait for that one before you pick this game up. But it essentially sees you play in a third person as a sniper throughout World War II. Here though you'll be facing off against the infamous Africa Corps and once again trying to tear apart the Nazis bit by bit. It has the usual mechanics that you remember from the older games but there are a few new bits added in as well. It was really nice to see how much customization you could make to your sniper rifle and the selection of those seemed greater. They've done an excellent job in terms of the visuals and performance here and everything's running at a very nice and smooth 30 frames per second with very few drops and that even applies to the co op mode. Now obviously these are are just impressions and they're not my final thoughts because there's an embargo for Monday but it's a very good game and one that you might want to be playing in a handheld form. Higher ground will give me an advantage. Next up is a game that is coming from mobile and it's called 80 Days. Now, don't let that put you off the fact that it was a mobile game. It was very well received indeed. It's a mixture of an adventure and a strategy title. You have to choose your own route around the world, traveling by airship, submarine, mechanical camel, steam train and other options including many different vehicles. You race against other players and the clock while playing as Phileas Fogg's loyal valet Passapatout, I think. The strategy comes from balancing his wealth, the finances as well as your time. As you choose your path from city to city, bribe your way onto early departures, all the while trying not to go bankrupt. Now, every single city and journey is narrated and there's an interactive story that allows you to control every aspect. As you'd expect, these choices will either improve your journey and increase the speed an interesting looking title that releases for about nine or ten pounds and also drops on monday the third one to drop on monday is a game called lanternium from victory road now this is about nine pounds and it's a puzzle adventure game where you control a raccoon in a blocky 3d world trying to solve basic puzzles along your way you're going to meet a troop of interesting characters as well as enemies and a ton of other anthropomorphic animals and as you'd expect being a game aimed maybe at children as well as adults the whole story is the very tragic one of trying to find out who stole raccoons favorite chocolate cookies. Oh boy. I need to find my cookies and bring them back home. Then I'll go with you and help you. Now I'm going to be releasing a list of the top point and click adventure games or just adventure games in general on the Nintendo Switch soon. And the next game is called Neo Cab from fellow Traveller Games. It's a very interesting one. It drops on Tuesday and you play as a cab driver who begins her journey by meeting a very old friend. I love the aesthetic of this game. And as you guide Lena throughout her day job, so to speak, you have a say over the types of passengers you pick up and then the dialogue you choose when having them in your cab will then affect the overall score they give you. There is an underlying and very strong story here. It's not voice narrated but it still has excellent music in the background and the visuals really do justice. There's a free demo of this one, I'd suggest you go and have a go of it if you like the adventure genre like myself. A good game and I'm enjoying it a lot.
Next up, then we've got the Ghostbusters, the video game remastered. Now, unlike the recent movie, this is a very good game indeed. I believe Glenn told me it was originally on the Wii U and that he had an absolute blast with it. You get the much loved and wonderful original cast and it features the voices and in-game likenesses of Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis and Ernie Hudson in the original story penned by the writers of the films, Dan and Harold. You'll be doing all the ghost hunting you expect. One of the lovely things about the game is in the storyline campaign, you'll be sometimes visiting some more creepy locations and it can genuinely be a little bit unnerving like when you have to go down into the library. This is actually a very good game and one worth keeping an eye out for when it drops on the 3rd at £29.99. Say, is that him? We're bringing back the classic Ghostbusters game, now in glorious HD resolution, so you'll see every spook, specter, and spirit more vividly. Get ready to suit up, strap on a proton pack, and join Spengler, Zedemore, Venkman, and me as our newest recruit against the paranormal forces of evil. Candleman from Indie Nova is dropping on the third and is an adventure game whereby you have to take the light wherever you go. It describes itself as having low light gameplay which essentially looks like it's going to mean that you gradually need to light the path as you travel around the world. You play as a little candle who can only burn for around about 10 seconds and you'll be overcoming obstacles and using that light based mechanic to gradually return light to the darkness. Looks interesting. Not too sure about the price, haven't played this one. Let me know down in the comments if it's one that you're looking out for. It drops with a 15% off sale as well, which puts it to around about £11. If you're just looking for something perhaps a little more simplistic then the 80s arcade classic inspired Cubix might be the game for you. It's a fast paced action puzzle game that has those high score chasing elements to it but it also has 1 to 4 player deathmatch as well as a 2 to 4 player co-op mode. There's over 50 levels here as well as challenges to compete in. It's all about the gameplay. This one drops on the 3rd and is one to keep your eye out for. Hexagroove Tactical DJ really interests me. I was one of probably the four people that enjoyed the Dance EJ games back on PC when they came out originally. You had to create different music and things like this. In this game you have to combine musical loops to excite the crowd, create and perform in your own unique style and improvise with real DJ techniques. There's one to four player on here as well and it describes itself as a music strategy action party game. You choose and combine those musical pieces across 10 dance genres, build your kit from over 420 instrumental loops, you can watch the crowd react to clear the level in one of seven club venues, or just improvise with sound effects and combos. I do like these music type games, I must admit, and if it's done right, this could be a real treat. I think we've got a couple of review codes for this one, and it's dropping at £30, so it's pitching itself as a premium game. We'll let you know in either a buy and avoid or an upcoming review. Once again, everyone's favourite budget choice on the Nintendo Switch, Cubic Games, are releasing Rhymeland's Hammer of Thor, and this is a turn-based RPG set in a unique world where steampunk meets Norse mythology, a little bit like Felsil Arbiter's Mark in that regard. Now this is dropping with the usual 50% pre-order bonus, taking it down to a measly 
4 or £5. Pounds. There's a turn-based fighting system here with simple but deep mechanics, three skill trees, Barbarian, Assassin and Shaman, and a crafting system that lets you create powerful new equipment. It's a very small download this one, but something about that isometric perspective and that it almost has a retro PC look about it, I'm getting Dungeon Keeper vibes from some of these screenshots, makes it a little endearing for me. I'll definitely be checking this one out and we'll let you know again in a buy and avoid or in an upcoming review if it's worth picking up. The Tiny Bang Story was released a very long time ago on mobile. I remember playing this way back in the day and it's essentially an adventure puzzler, a bit like a hidden object game where you're tapping things on the screen and solving puzzles and mysteries. I liked the quirky style of it, but it's not the longest game ever, but I do seem to remember the music was lovely. It has a bright and vibrant world and it's more on the simple side, but again, it's one you could easily play with your kids and at around six pounds dropping on the fourth, this might be one to look at. I think we can call this week a bit of a calm before the storm because the week after we've got Asphalt, Ukulele, Trine 4 as well as other big names. How are you guys getting on with Dragon Quest? I'm sure you're having a good time on that one as well as the rest of the gigantic backlog. I'm not sure about you guys but I'm absolutely loving my Switch at the moment. Playing some of these games on long car journeys, just enjoying it playing with my kids, it's been brilliant. Thanks as always for the massive support you guys give us. Remember if you want to join the patrons they're all here on the screen and the links are all down below. You can do so from a dollar and it genuinely makes a difference to Glenn and I. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!